Welcome to Suncoast Spotlight. This is a local television program brought to you in partnership with the Sarasota County Film and Entertainment Office, also known as the Film Commission, and the Suncoast Technical College, and the Education Channel, and the Digital Video Production Program of this college. Thank you for watching. We have some great guests today. We come to you to bring you more information and more personal acquaintanceship with people and places and things that are unique to Sarasota County in the world of television and film. And today we have with us two amazing producers that do many other tasks beside produce because they are very actively involved in independent film. We have Elaine Schneiderman Schmidt and we have Dory Rath. And I don't know where to start with you two ladies because your resumes are huge. I know that you've just recently wrapped a film called Albion that showed in the Sunscreen Film Festival, right? So why don't we start there and kind of work our way backwards. Tell me about Albion, how it came to be. I know you shot it in Europe and it was an interesting cast, uh, John Cleese and... Yes. Uh, so please tell me about that. Um, well, we had, um, well, Elaine and I had worked together for some years and... Many projects. Um, many, many <laughs> projects. Um, and my inaugural project was with Elaine. Um, Albion was written and directed by Castile Landon, who also happens to be my daughter and a Sarasota native. And a born. beautiful, talented redhead. Thank you, yes. <laughs> and um, we, the film stars John Cleese, um, Deborah Messing from Will and Grace, um, uh, who else do we have? Jennifer Morrison, who's the lead of Once Upon a Time, right. and um, Stephen Dorff. Um, so we have an amazing wow. cast. Daniel Sharman, incredible actor, and Liam McIntyre, who's Spartacus and Hercules, Ryan and O'Nan. Ryan O'Nan, who's fantastic as well. He also um, co-wrote the film, as did uh, Sarah Skugel. And um, we shot in. We shot for about a week in Michigan. Mm -hmm. It was minus 15 degrees. Oh, and, no. Yes. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to tell a Floridian. That exactly. just chills us to the bone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we filmed in um, underwater, under a frozen lake, which wow. was really interesting. Um, then we moved to Florida, and where it, we promptly moved into 90 degree weather. And we shot here in the Sarasota Bradenton area. Um, and um, and up in Ocala for mm -hmm. a bit. We did some water shoots there. And there's and beautiful horse farms up there too. There's amazing horse farms. We were shooting in the springs. Mm -hmm. We shot at Blue Springs, which Ooh. was, and we filmed the horses in the water um, from underneath the water. It was incredible. And um, then we went to Bulgaria for two months and filmed over there. Um, the film was bought by Netflix for Worldwide and um, and was released, um, it's actually being released as we speak. So right. it's on pay-per-view now and um, should be in Walmart this month and then um, Netflix in July. And is this a family-friendly G-rated or PG-rated or PG-13? What, what it's PG-rated mm -hmm. um, and it's very family-friendly. There's, and I think the only reason it got a PG rating, maybe just because the subject matter is a little more mature. Mm -hmm. It's about a little girl that um, is very disconnected um, in this world, and she ends up finding a magical stallion that takes her to this other world where she discovers that she is the key to saving an entire race of people. Oh, wonderful. And it's kind of Game of Thrones for kids. Mm -hmm. That's... Um, it sounds very much, you know, YA, young adult yeah. fantasy, Game of Thrones. Yes, very much so. Oh. Well, the, ti the full title is Albion the Enchanted Stallion. No. Oh. And it was a beautiful, beautiful black stallion. I mean, they took two of them over to Bulgaria. From the U.S.? From yes, we FedExed wow. them. You FedExed them? Yes. You're not kidding. To Scandinavia. And then we... No, um, she's not <laughs> No, and then um, <laughs> Ashley, the trainer, who was only 26 years old at the time, mm. her name's Ashley Klein. She's an amazing animal trainer. Um, she, she actually flew over with them, and then she drove through nine countries including three Eastern countries, wow. um, with a driver who spoke absolutely no English. Um, and in fact- even, Hand signals we were. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had to have a driver who spoke the Baltic languages because um, you basically bribe your way across the border. <laughs> right. And everything is very close together. Yes. It's not, we have states, they have countries. So, you right. drive across. <laughs> exactly. But each country, you have to find a way to get in. And right. it's not when you're hauling, you know, 1,600 pound stallions 
Um, you just, it's not like the U.S. where you just apply ahead of time, get your permits, and, and be on your way. And you, drive on through. Right. You have to discuss things at each border and, um, and find your way across in an orderly manner. So, um, Bribe your way across. <laughs> I've, I've actually heard that before with major feature films uh -huh. where they have uh, ended up having to meet with government officials with little paper bags full of money. And yes, then they, they have a discussion where the money crosses the table and disappears under the other side. And it's amazing how much of that goes on in other countries. Yeah, the, the nice thing is that they have, you know, their their currency and the exchange rate is so favorable um, that, you know, what seems like a huge bribe to them is like, really, $200? $200? That's what you're looking? We're good. We're good with that. <laughs> we're, we're good. We're going to have to take a short break. Um, this segments go so fast. And when we come back, we're going to talk about so many other projects as quickly as we can because there's so much about you I'd like the viewers to know. Stay with us. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Tech Tots Preschool is located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College and is open to the public for preschool and voluntary pre-K classes. Tech Tots has been serving the Sarasota community since 1977, offering a safe and nurturing environment for children three years of age and up. The students in Suncoast Technical College's early childhood education program work side by side with the professional licensed child care providers learning the skills of quality child care services and offering a low child to adult ratio. Tech Tots child care services are offered at no charge to students of Suncoast Technical College and are available to the public at a reasonable rate on a first come first served basis. For more information, call Tech Tots at 941-924-1365, extension 62383. Tech Tots, a great start for your tot. Welcome back. You're watching Sunco Spotlight, and our guests today are power women producers, women that I admire who've made all sorts of indie films on all sorts of budgets, and they've worked with stars, and they've worked with the unknown that have the potential to one day be stars. We're talking to Dory Rath and Elaine Schneiderman Schmidt. And we talked before about Albion, where you were getting horses across uh, international borders by FedEx, which is fascinating to me. I want to learn more about that. And let's talk a little bit about a recent film that you did called Apple of My Eye. And it was originally called, and then there was Light. Yes. Burt Reynolds was uh, one of the celebrities that appeared. Tell me a little bit about that. That was shot fairly locally, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was filmed quite a bit at the Southeastern uh, Dog Guide, guide Dogs, dog place which is such a great organization. What a beautiful, beautiful yeah. place to film. And between the puppies and then we had a miniature horse. And Apple was so well trained. Ashley, the horse trainer who did Albion, uh, Dory had bought Apple and lived with Ashley for six months while she trained. Apple oh, to wow. be Apple as with good. Ashley, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't live with Ashley. Apple lived with Apple Ashley. Apple lived right? with Ashley. I'm sorry. <gasps> no. To train it. And when we first brought it back to the house, at Dory's house, it was living in the house. And she was trained to be a seeing eye dog. Wow. And it pretty much does anything a dog can do. Lays at your feet, has to wear little sneakers in the house that didn't scratch the claws, but um, is housebroken. So she was just wonderful to work with. And Ashley, again, just pulled it off. She's so talented. And Burt was wonderful to work Aww. with Burt Reynolds. Um, it's played. so great to see him doing roles. Yeah. I've seen him in a couple of indie films the last few years, and it just always warms my heart. You know, he's a Florida boy through yeah. and through. Yeah, and he's very and open work. to training, like to, um, he's very open and approachable, and he wants to train people. He has a, he actually has an acting school. Right, in, in Jupiter. In Jupiter, mm -hmm. so highly and recommend that. I worked that. with him in the 90s um, on another film called The Crew which was an interesting project. And um, so to not see him in all this time and then to see him again, he's still just as charming and as bright and as friendly as ever. He is. He, he is. really is. He's a pleasure to work with, an absolute professional. I saw him get an award at the Governor's uh, Conference on Tourism a year or two ago. And he came out, he had, he had not been real well, and he came out with a walker. And he got his way to the to podium and he handed the walker off to an assistant. The lights came on, the applause came up, they showed a, a sizzle reel, and he stood up straight and the charisma just poured out of him. All of a sudden, <laughs> he was funny, he was charming, he was handsome, he was so alive, and it was just a wonderful thing to see. That's you know. the way he was every day on our shoot. Yeah. He really was, and he was always 
um, not only helping the young actors, he was patient with, because it was an mm -hmm. independent film, and it was a lower budget film than he is used to, and yet he made every department feel uh, supported and appreciated, mm -hmm. he couldn't thank us enough. He had a really good rapport with Castile, our mm -hmm. director, and it was a pleasure. It was one of uh, my favorite films to make, which is really a lot simpler than most of the films I make, but oh, just sure. between the people and how well it went and um, watching Castile work with the actors and the horses and the puppies <laughs> and beautiful weather, and it was sold the first day. We we started shooting that day it had been sold. Mm -hmm. Now Dory has a, you have a great awesome. business model <laughs> about making indie films. And we've talked about this before. When you make an indie film, you want a great story, you want a great subject matter, you want good actors, you want the audience to be really involved and love it. But you also have a really great business mind for this. And you know you. that there are elements that will make it sell or leave it get dusty on a shelf. Tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about that because I think that indie filmmakers sometimes they fall in love with the project and they don't think about the business of show business. Well, I think you know, to me one of the most important things is if you want to uh, is is to make sure that your the bottom line you're looking for is aligned with the bottom line that your investors are right. interested in. Some investors they invest because they want their kid to be in a movie. Other investors invest because they want to get to a festival. Others invest because they want to get their money back. And very often, um, I will hear producers say, oh, my investor doesn't care if he gets his money back. He just wanted to support a Christian film, for example. Right. Well, maybe he did want to support a Christian film and he wanted to get his money back. Right. If that's the case, make sure your film is highly marketable mm -hmm. and that it's commercial. Because if your investors are interested in getting their money back and you made a film that is entirely dependent on getting into Sundance, you know, if it's a deep drama or so, with no cast, mm -hmm. then um, if you don't get into Sundance, your film's probably not worth anything. And and your chances of getting into Sundance are, you know, one in 13,000 mm -hmm. now. So I think that's the most important thing. For, for me, um, especially with Castile's career, you know, getting started, she ultimately wants to do YA, mm -hmm. um, YA more, drama or psychological thrillers especially. Mm -hmm. um, but getting started, we knew that um, that family films were easier to sell. Sure. So that's why we focused there. It's ironic, as many R-rated films as there are out there, and yet I mean, the family films are the ones that seem to get the consistent box office. Um, we're gonna take another break just for a moment, but when we come back, we're gonna talk about how I first met you way back when, mm -hmm. uh, eight or 10 years ago, and Elaine, some of the things you've been involved mm -hmm. in, and you've been working with Jake Gyllenhaal, and I mean, you two have been all over the map. I'm, again, I'm really impressed with you both, and I want the audience at home to get to know you better. We'll be right back. The Automotive Service Technology Program at Suncoast Technical College prepares students for careers in high demand areas of automotive specialization such as brakes, suspension and steering, electrical systems, engine repair, transmission and transaxles, heating and air conditioning, and much more. For more information, log on to suncoast.edu or call 941-924-1365. Suncoast Technical College, career in a year. Welcome back to Sunco Spotlight. Thank you for staying with us and watching the rest of the show. This is our second half, and I want to get into a little more about the background and kind of the foundational history of how you both got into filmmaking. Um, Elaine, let me start with you. You go back to Miami Vice and many, many really well-known projects. Have you always worked in the Miami Quarter, or have you traveled the world? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I did start out, um, my first big show was Miami Vice first season. And I start, my first day was the first day of filming. So wow. of course we didn't have any idea at the beginning if the show was gonna make it. We only had six episodes bought. And it was kind of being in the right place at the right time. Mm. I started working with the producers of that show, Michael Mann and John Nicolella. And they took a liking to me, and I was young enough to not know that I can say no sometimes. <laughs> so you so work 12-hour, 14-hour days. Seven days a week, 18 right. hours a day for the whole first year. And after that, I left the show, but we stayed very good friends. And I did all the Michael Mann series that came in afterwards, or John's, you know, and I traveled with Michael Mann. I did a show in Spain, a miniseries in Spain for him, and 
did Allie when he came back, so we had worked again together, but through that, it just started networking, and I had the opportunity to work with some of the finest people in the film business. Right. It's so, it really does prove that it, so much of our business is about relationships. You form relationships, you bond with people, you have a positive working experience. They keep your name, you keep their name. They remember you positively with your work ethic and your talent and your skill and your dedication, and they share your name, and suddenly your web and your network gets bigger and bigger. And for filmmakers everywhere, especially young ones, I'm always telling them, Relationships are the foundation of everything mm -hmm. we do. Keep every call sheet you've ever had. <laughs> Keep every contact number and every email you've ever had because people, generally speaking, don't change their cell phones and frequently don't change their emails. And then, Dory, you and I met um, when you were doing a TV pilot and it workers was comp. for workers comp mm -hmm. and it was a comedy robert caradine and, and um, um, morgan, morgan fairchild morgan fairchild she looked fabulous yes, he she was, did. He was oh, hysterically so funny. funny i still see him with the tie around his forehead <laughs> uh, it was a very funny pilot yeah and that's actually how i met elaine as well oh. um, at the time i it was the first time i had produced something and i had no idea the importance of a line producer that they not only develop your budget they hire all of your crew and they manage all of your crew on set and um, and bring you in on budget right. so it's probably you know one of the certainly one of the most critical positions on set and um, Elaine took a liking to Castile, who'd written the script, and she called me and said, you know, I'll, I'll line produce it for you for free. And wow. I was like, okay, what a, what a whatever. Bargain. I had uh -huh. no idea. <laughs> I had just moved to the area. I was living in Miami, so I didn't really know anybody yet. I, as a matter of fact, I hadn't even met you yet. No. And somebody had given Dory my name, so she hired me to do a budget. And I did the budget, but fell in love with the script. And knowing that a 19-year-old at the time wrote it, I would, it just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And then when I met with Dory and Castile and uh, moved forward, I gave them this budget, but I was like, where do they go from there? Mm -hmm. So I called her back and I said, um, would you allow me to line produce for free? <laughs> she, That's so and, great. And now that I know Elaine, I know she doesn't line produce for free. No, and no, I no. wouldn't either when I, if I saw how much but work it I, was. It was I incredible. The project. Such a, great concept. I still believe in it, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun. It was. It was a funny pilot. And it was a lot of laugh-out-loud humor at the screening. I remember when we had yeah. it and screened it at one of our, our events. And, and I'm always amazed that you as a mom, not only are you a, an amazing businesswoman, and you're an amazing producer, and you really get it about the business side of the business, but you're an incredible mom to help your daughter advance her career as much as she has. I mean, uh, in the end, it stands on her talent. Castile either has the talent or she doesn't. Absolutely. And she's proven that she has, but you've opened doors that... Well, my mom did the same thing for me. We, mm -hmm. um, my mom and I started a company um, called the Nelco Companies, which um, my mom founded it, and then I joined her, and we co-owned it um, until, for 30 years until we sold it. It grew up to be um, one of the largest female-owned businesses in Florida. And, um, and then one day my mom, my daughter said, you know, after we had sold the business, she had already been out in LA um, writing and acting. And she said, you know, you spent the last 30 years working with your mom. How about you spend the next 30 working with me? And because <laughs> I'd like to work with my mom. So what a um, great multi-generational yeah, so heritage and tradition. That's what brought me to the, to the business. And then um, she started moving behind the camera, but it was still, um, I had done many, many projects, Elaine and I together, before we ever did one of her projects. Wow. And um, she needed to learn, you know, she, just as I did, my mom didn't make me the president for 20 years. And, um, you know, I had to earn my way up from, you know, receptionist all the way up the chain. I and think that's known in our business as paying your dues. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, um, and Castile needed to learn that too. And. Um, and for me, it would have been irresponsible to put my investors in something that was just my kids' project. But um, it's been very successful since we switched to doing, I, I now um, exclusively produce her material, and that's, it does well. That's amazing. We're going to take another break. We'll be right back. The Cutting Edge Salon, located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College, is open to the public for styling services, coloring services, chemical texturing, nail coloring, manicures and pedicures, hair removal services, facials, and more. All of the beauty services are performed by the students of the Suncoast Technical College's cosmetology program under the supervision of its award-winning instructors. 
The Cutting Edge Salon is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. And on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, evening appointments are also available from 4 until 9 p.m. For appointments, call 941-924-1365, extension 62343. The Cutting Edge Salon, located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College, is a cut above. And we're back. Thanks for still being with us. This is Suncoast Spotlight, brought to you by the Sarasota County Film and Entertainment Office, the digital video production program of Suncoast Technical College, and the Education Channel. Wow, that's a lot of partners, and we're all here to make it happen just to entertain you. So getting back to our guests, Elaine Schneiderman-Schmidt and Dory Raff, and we're talking about uh, some of the recent projects they've done. I want to just touch quickly on this year's Academy Award winning best film, Moonlight. And Elaine, you kind of got pulled into that late in the production to help someone who had to drop out. They, um, they had wanted a local line producer, and I'm not local in Miami anymore. Um, they hired a lovely lady named Veronica and a good friend of mine, Jennifer Razakowski, who is getting her first shot at UPME. Oh, wow. And Jennifer had called mm -hmm. me that Veronica had a death in her family oh. and had to leave right before they started shooting for a week or two. So I basically went in just as a favor for a couple of weeks till Veronica could come back, and that's how I got involved with the project. Right. I loved the project. and. And you have a credit on it? You yes, were given a credit? Yes, they were very kind to give me a credit as additional line producing. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer went on from there because she did a phenomenal job. And she UPM'd a movie we did last summer called The Florida Project right. that's on its way to Cannes right now. That's great. So, and I, I love the fact that you are Sarasota Bradenton people and you have moved into so many higher atmospheres of filming and people and projects. Um, but tell me about the Florida Project, because I'm very intrigued by the fact that it's going to Cannes. That's quite a feather in your cap. Yeah, it was it was shot um, entirely in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, Sean Baker wrote the project. The The concept of the film is just, it's brilliant. It's, um, it's, it's actually- It's very heart-wrenching. I mean, it's, it's very a very heart -wrenching. serious subject. It's, it's, it's about- to make that movie. Yeah. It's hard. It's about um, homeless families that are living outside of Disney World and in the um, in the hotels and the motels right around there. And you know, and some people have said, "Oh, Disney may not like it," but Disney's not doing anything wrong. Disney's creating an economy there, right? right. And um, and it's probably because of that economy that these people even have any opportunities. Right. And they come so, there for job opportunities. Yes. And when they can't afford homes and they can't afford rent. Uh, long term in apartments and houses and so forth, those hotels and motels serve a function. Right. Otherwise, they would be living in station wagons. And Absolutely. That's not a good thing. So, it's the um, last step to being out on the street. Hmm. It really is. Uh, unfortunately, for many families, and we worked with families who had three kids and wow. five kids, and they all lived together. And even though both parents might be working, they still can't afford to get out of the motel. Mm -hmm. And the film is real. There's, um, there are a couple um, really talented actors in the film. Willem Dafoe. Oh wow! Um, He's awesome. Wonderful. He super wonderful. sense of humor. Um, and um, the, but the rest of the cast, they're they're real. They're the people that live there and the kids and. Um, it's really, it's really pretty powerful. So that film is going to Cannes, mm -hmm. um, and Elaine brought me on to that film um, to oversee the accounting and finance, and then I ended up hiring on with the um, with the production company, and I'm now their chief financial officer, doing a lot of projects around the country for right. them. Right. In fact, I think okay. I, I think there are some other intersections of. Uh, of connectivity that you've made that I was reading about or following up on on some other projects and I went, oh, oh, that's the that's the project <laughs> Dory's working on. Yeah. So the, the production company, well, actually Sweet Tomato Films, our company, was right. the production company that produced it, but the financier company is June Pictures. They've made seven really amazing movies in one year. Wow. And we submitted submitted five to festival, three got into Sundance, wow. one won the three documentary. Three got into Sundance. Three. Three, three out of the four submitted to Sundance. When your chance in, is one in 13,000. Which is probably a record. Uh -huh. um, one won the documentary competition. All three um, sold very well um, at Sundance. And then um, the last film that we submitted, we submitted to one festival in Cannes, and it got in. So, That's fantastic. Um, they just seem to have the luck 
well, they have an amazing they have producer the, the there. Producer and they have the right a, ingredients put together yes. in that magical way where everything gels and the talent works the with the cinematography. The producer is a 28 year old girl wow, that is picking Sachs. these. Her name's She's Alex probably. Sachs. She's picking these projects. She won. Um, she was one of the top 10 producers to watch on Variety's list this year. Wow. Um, yeah, it's pretty brilliant. And so where's she from? She's in L.A. She's in and LA. I actually leave Sunday. We're doing a film out there with um, Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, um, Candace Bergen, a um, really fun film called Book Club. I just saw something about that in uh, Variety, as a yeah. matter of fact. They did yes, an article it, it on it. It just got announced this week. Forget the guys, Richard Gere. Well, they're, he's <laughs> not signed yet. They're not oh. signed. I know. Shh. It's top secret. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> and we're running out of time again. This is just amazing. Will you come back again and visit us and sure, let us know can. how Can turns out and let us know how June Pictures turns out and what it's like to work with Jane Fonda and, and wonderful, vintage, yeah. gorgeous yeah. women that are still we so also vibrant. Have three movies in our lineup that will all be shot at least partially. That are being mostly, developed for Florida. Being developed for Florida. No, we love to hear that. So, yes. yes. That's, that's just, that's just uh, Hopefully nurturing to my heart. I love to hear that. And we want to help you in Sarasota County and Manatee County any way we can. You always do, Jeannie. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> do. Sarasota County is one of the best counties to film in. It oh, really thank you. Is. Well, it's a joy to be here. And we appreciate all of you being with us. So tune in again. We'll see you soon.